Good morning, everyone. I look forward to sharing with you today about uh, being a child of God. So please be turning over to Romans 8. That's one of my very favorite chapters, so I look forward to sharing that with you today. I hope that this will be a blessing to you. Thank you for joining me uh, in this uh, time together. Irving Baptist Fellowship, I'm praying for you every day. I know that you're praying for one another, too. Would you do that? Uh, we've heard from uh, Dolores, and she's doing much better. Uh, and Tim and Marilyn, of course, are doing great, and we're great. We're very glad about that. And we had a wonderful Zoom uh, time together on Wednesday night, and it was uh, really good. Uh, Kathy is moving, so we want to pray for her uh, as well. So hopefully you're there at Romans 8. I'm going to begin in uh, verse 12. I'm going to read through verse 21. So if you'll look on, please, I'm going to be reading out of the New American Standard. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the desires of the flesh. But if we are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if, it, but if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about our responsibilities as a child of God. We're going to talk about our responsibilities to who we are uh, for the kingdom and as a child of God and uh, as a servant of God. Let's continue, please, in verse 15. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, you, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies that our spirit, uh, that we are children of God. And if we are children, heirs also, spirit of God, I'm so heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. But I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willing, not be, but because of him uh, who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also would be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God or being the child of God. The uh, Greek word here, uh, that we're seeing here for sons of God is the same word we uh, heard Jesus use in uh, Matthew 5 when he was doing the Sermon on the Mount. And he is he said, blessed are the, what? The blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the sons of God. It, it is the, the same word there, the same Greek word there, uh, refers to descendant or an heir. Ladies and gentlemen, we are heirs of God. We are children of God. We are descendants of God and joint heirs with Christ. And that's what we're, that's what we're reading here, that, that we are joint heirs with Christ. And, and that's what we read in 17. If children, then heirs also of God and fellow heirs with Christ. So that means we're, we're joint heirs. That means that we, we belong together. Uh, I have two brothers, uh, and, um, unfortunately, our parents have passed away. Uh, so when that time came for uh, the will to to disperse the property, my brothers and I, my, my family was was blessed uh, by allowing us to be joint heirs. And so we shared and shared alike. And that's what it means, that, that we are joint heirs with Christ. We are going to inhabit the kingdom of God. We're going to inhabit king, uh, heaven with, with God one day as a child of God. And uh, I'd like to share with you some other verses. Um, in Galatians 4, it says, And because that we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son 
uh, into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Isn't that almost the same thing we just read? Calling out, Abba, Father. Not that you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir, his descendant. That's almost exactly the same thing. That was in Galatians 4, 6 through 7. Um, in Deuteronomy 14, he told the, the Hebrew uh, children that he, that he was their Lord and their God, but he was also their father, and, he was, and they were his children. 1 John 2, 28 says, And now, dear children, continue in him so that when, we, when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. And he was in, in uh, he was in the in the, the very next few verses. First John three one says, "See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God." And that is what we are. the The reason the the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Jesus said, my sheep recognize my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one shall take them from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. So no one can kidnap them from me. I and the father are one. Jesus said that in the closing verses of uh, John 10. So Jesus recognizes us. We are his sheep. As a matter of fact, Jesus describes that that God has his hands around Jesus and and we are in Jesus' hands. That's one of my that's one of my strong beliefs in the in my go-to verses when I talk about eternal salvation. No one is more powerful than God, and you aren't more powerful than God. There's not a sin you can commit. However, there's not a sin you can commit that takes you away from being a child of God. However, you can certainly make God ashamed of you, can't you? That's what we're going to talk about here tonight. Let me go on. In John 1, 12, it says, But all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become, guess what? Children of God. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God. How? By faith. That's in Galatians 3, 26. By faith are we receive, have, have we received Jesus Christ? By faith have we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior? By faith we have asked and stepped into that relationship with God, into that love relationship that we are now children of God. And by faith we are saved by God's favor and God's grace. Church family, it is a blessed thing to be able to crawl up into the lap of God and say, Abba, Father, today has been an awful day, and I just really need you to wrap your arms around me. Would you do that? You are his child, and you have every right, every right to, to ask to step up in the lap of God Almighty, the creator of this universe. Isn't that the most wonderful thing? Wow, that's incredible. What a marvelous thing. So this the word here uh, that is used in the Greek, the Greek word stands for being an heir, a, a descendant of God. And, and what I want to talk about now is what happens when we sin. When we sin, it is our responsibility to ask God to forgive us of our sin. And the Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to separate our sin as far as the east is from the west. As a matter of fact, he tells us that though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So God is telling us that he will wipe away our sins, that he will remove our sins from us. But there needs to be a sincerity of the heart that says, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my sin. When we're when we've got the Bible calls about we bow our neck. I'm not sorry for my sin. I haven't done anything wrong. It's not it's that other person that is making me mad. And the things that I say about that person's because they keep making me mad. And guess what? 
That sin's going to go unforgiven. Why? There's no change in your heart. That's another, that's another sermon we're going to talk about in the near future. There's no change in your heart. There's no, there's, no, there's no decision to say, God, I'm sorry. I recognize that I have a sinful nature, and sometimes I let my sinful nature sneak up on me and get the best of me, and I make bad decisions. Let me tell you about a bad decision that I almost made. I, in, my, in my career, I uh, worked directly with a judge, and this judge wanted me to talk to this preacher. So this African-American preacher from East Texas, apparently, as I, as I found out later, he was calling me, wanting me to, have, to get the judge to have mercy on uh, this particular boy. Uh, this young man, uh, 21, 20, right in that age, uh, had made a lot of mistakes. And, uh, this, and, this, and this preacher was going to call and, and talk to me. And I was supposed to go to the judge and tell the judge what he said. And that uh, we're going to, he, he wants this guy to have mercy because he comes to his church. He knows his mama and, and he's a good boy. And he's going to, and this preacher is going to go make, 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 make things right. Now, here's the part. I, I almost messed up. You know how irritating preachers can be and how, how whiny they are. And I and I thought the same thing, and I and I said, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to listen to this guy. I I looked, I know this guy, this boy, this young man. He is he is sorry as the day is long, and I'm not going to put up with it. So I was determined I was going to smart off to this this preacher because he's going to be whiny and tell me all these stories, and he so he started talking to me. And I was sitting there waiting for him. I was, I was getting my, my stuff ready. I was gonna I was gonna get into him and and tell him, you know, you, you don't know this boy. You ha I bet he hadn't been to your church in months, and I bet he probably hadn't. But something happened gratefully in my heart, and I said, I said, preacher, sounds like you got a little Texas twang in your voice. Where are you from? He said, I'm from Lindale, Texas, and I said, really. You ever been to the kitchen, candy kitchen there in Lindale and talked to Miss Ruby and her husband? And there was a silence for a moment. He said, I know you. You're Mr. Pittman's boy. I know you. You're Mr. Pittman's boy. Yeah, I know you. You're Mr. Pittman's boy. I know you. I had a silence then. A lot of, lot of, lot of thoughts went through my mind. I told him that I'd gotten my first drink of Mountain Dew uh, over there across in the Washateria, away from from the uh, candy kitchen. I've been around all over Lindale. And boy, that kicked something off. He said, "I know you. You're Mr. Pittman's boy." Here's honestly what I thought. This is the truth. I thought, what if I had smarted off to him? And I had embarrassed not only my earthly father, but my heavenly father, who I really belonged to. That's where my heart is. That was a turning, matter of fact, that was a turning point in my life. That's why I remember that moment so well. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was. Can you understand that God is our father and we are the children of God? And that puts a responsibility on us. It puts a lot of responsibility on us. The things that come out of our mouth, the actions, the words we say to our loved ones. Boy, howdy. Isn't that the place that we make the most mistakes with? The words that come out of our mouth, the actions of our heart, the thinking that we have and the actions that we do. I'll tell you that story sometime. Maybe uh, my church family knows that story about how to, how to change your thinking and change the results, how to change your thinking and change the results of what's going on in your life. Maybe we can talk about that. Uh, hopefully we're going to be uh, back in our church real soon, but, but we'll see. Here's the bottom line on this. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a love relationship with you that is real and that it's personal. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God and the purpose and the plan and the intent of God. As a matter of fact, God knew that we were such sinners that the Bible says that God sent his son to die on the cross for us. And that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that we wouldn't have to. As a matter of fact, Jesus' uh, death became a big word called propitiation. It's a substitute. He became our redeemer. You know what redeemer means? It's, it's a financial word. It's a financial word. Have you ever pawned anything or gone to a pawn shop? Did somebody else has pawned something and now the time is up and now it's up for sale? Maybe it was a ladder. Maybe it's a, uh, a saw. Uh, maybe um, it's, it's some other item that you've been trying to, to tools. That person sold it. They left it. But here's the deal. They have a pawn ticket. And within a certain amount of time, usually 30 days, they can come back and redeem their tool. They can buy it back. The Bible says that, that God has allowed Satan to be the God of, over this air, the God of this world. In other words, the earth. That God has allowed Satan to have the temporary work in this now, be absolutely for sure. Please understand this. God is on his throne and he is in charge. But God allows Satan to do things in this world. And let me tell you very clearly, Satan is a created creature, though very powerful, obviously. And he is, the, he is a, uh, a being of chaos and destruction. Temptation and harm come from Satan, the devil, our enemy. <laughs> I was cutting on on my my tree outside. I have a have a crazy uh, mesquite tree outside in my front yard. Beautiful. I mean, it it looks like a weeping willow. If you don't know what a what a mesquite tree looks like, uh, mine was in some places almost down to the ground. So it it was had a weeping willow look. So I was cutting it today, grabbed hold of one of those little short, brand new um, uh, uh, limbs that had just grown. Man, I put, a, I put a thorn in my thumb. Didn't say a bad word. I just went, oh. Beautiful tree. Provides shade, actually beauty. It is thorny. So is the rose bush in my, in my yard. That's what our world is like. And when you're a child of God, you can call on God, and He is your Abba Father, and He will you can crawl up in His lap and you say, Daddy, man, I have really messed up today. I need you to listen to me and hear me and make a difference in my life. I just, and frankly, I don't know what to say right now. Can you just hold me? And he will. You see, Jesus died on the cross for you. So that the Bible says that, that all who call on him as Lord and Savior, by faith, believing and confessing our sin, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. And it says anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be, not can be, not ought to be, it says it shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth we confess our salvation when we confess our sin and ask God to forgive us. That's how you become a child of God. It's just really that easy. I've gone over to Africa seven times now and shared the most, the precious gospel of Jesus Christ and thousands of people have accepted Jesus just that easy. People who've never been to college, they've never been to 11th grade. Most of them have never been past 6th or 7th grade. Really, most of them have not been in a lot of school. But they understand the simple truth. We make it so stinking complicated here in America. It's just the simple truth. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And he wants you to be his child.
Now, with that comes any other responsibility. Living as a child of God, <laughs> that's everyday challenge. But when we sin, we ask God sincerely in our heart to forgive us. The Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Now, it's a smart idea not to keep sinning. But we have a responsibility as a child of God to watch the things that come out of our mouth. So, you know, garbage in, what comes out? Garbage out. So careful what you see. Careful what you're listening to. Careful what you're putting into your mind. Um, the Word of God is an incredible word, isn't it? It it has inc lots and lots and lots of answers. I'd like for you to be a child of God and live like a child of God. Would you join me in praying right now? Father God, I want to thank you for the precious people who have the, I have the honor of them listening to this. And I thank you, God, that as your child, Abba Father, that um, you hear me right now. You always hear me because I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, with faith believing and asking in your name for your glory, not my own. And that way I know you're listening to me. Even if I breathe a quick prayer, even if my prayer is five seconds long, Father, I thank you for hearing us. So I just pray for the precious people who are hearing me right now, that God, that you will bless them. Please keep them from this terrible virus. And please keep them from flu and, and other challenges. Father, I pray that you will bless them. Many people are having trouble with, with finances and food. Uh, getting back out there into a job, having a paycheck. God, this is a big deal. And I know that you have allowed Satan to bring chaos into this world. And, and I know that you have allowed these various things. And I know that you have allowed Satan to blind people. But Lord, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that are blinded by Satan. And they can't see the forest for the trees. Father, I pray, as I had the experience of that man, that, pa that pastor from Lindell, that says, I know you. You're Mr. Pittman's boy. God, would they say that about us? Would they say that about us? I know you. You're a child of God. I know you. Oh, I see it on you all over. You're a child of God. And I pray, God, that every person that is hearing this today, that you would love on them, that you would bless them, Lord. Encourage them, God. And I thank you for hearing us every time. I don't take that for granted. I pray this in the most wonderful, precious name of Jesus. In Christ's name I pray, amen. My name is Larry Pittman. I'm pastor of Irving Baptist Fellowship at 2201 West Shady Grove Road in Irving, Texas. Um, you know, we're going to be back to church pretty soon, it looks like. Uh, 11 a.m., we start our worship service. Uh, we would love to have you come join us. Uh, thank you. God bless you. Have a great day.